All right, welcome back to the IOY podcast today. I got a new guest on today. Go ahead and introduce yourself, man. Yo, yo, what's happening? It's your boy, Young Reese Dude, representing Dayton, Ohio. What's going on? Oh, shit. So how you doing, man? Man, I can't call it cakeaholic. Man. Can't <laughs> complain at all, man. Yeah, I feel it. Tell the people how you got into what you do. Uh, Well, like uh, my father was a rapper, so I looked up to him and then... um. Um, you know, just from years of seeing him and just learning and loving music. And then uh when Jay-Z's Blueprint One came out, he bought the uh the actual cassette. Yeah. You know, I know a lot of people still may not know what cassettes are, but you know, the old the old heads don't know what a cassette is. But the blueprint cassette was, you know, an actual blue tape. Oh shit. And, you know, that intrigued me, man. So just listening to Hove, that that was like my eighth grade ninth grade year maybe even earlier than that and uh just listening to hove and um that kind of made me say i wanted to do that and from that point on man i hit the ground running oh yeah oh, i like that you know because you know like what you said you know like the cassettes and stuff they don't have that around no more you know like the actual you know the physical form you know because it hits different than you know versus just being on your phone you know and looking at shit you know because you right. got the streams and shit Right. And, and like what that kind of did was it, it made you feel like you were a part of it yeah. because you actually, you actually owned a piece of it, you know, like, um, like they selling these NFTs now, like, and that you had a physical copy of whatever project it was. And it wasn't like, like if your iCloud break down now, hell, you don't know if you're going to get everything back. Yeah, You know yeah. what I'm saying? But back then, you know, of course, you have to worry about, like, with CDs, you have to worry about whether or not they scratch or yeah, the yeah. tape, if, if they actually lose the tape on the inside. But, you know, um, you owned a piece of it. I still got, like, CD covers around, you know, my crib somewhere, man. No, I feel it, man, because when I was young, too, I used to get them a lot, you know, but that was when it was dying out and shit. You know, iPods yeah. were coming out and all that bullshit, but I remember getting them. I was like, hell yeah. You know, yeah, I'm going to take yeah, care yeah. of this motherfucker with my life. <laughs> And listen, man, when I tell you that was the only time I ever went to Best Buy, I was a kid. I couldn't afford nothing at Best Buy, bro. So no. <laughs> like, but I could go, I could go get a 999 CD. And yeah, then you yeah. had to go to Best Buy because Walmart's was the uh non-explicit version there. Yeah, the clean no, no, shit. Yeah, nobody <laughs> wanted to listen to that, man. So no. I want to hear I want to hear all the cuss words. I need yeah. to know how you really feel, you know. Yeah, because it's, it's it's a complete different difference, you know. Definitely, what I'm saying? definitely a different vibe, bro. Definitely. Because a lot of shit gets cut out, you know, and then you don't even, some of it don't make sense, you know, but that's all I like about now. You can literally just, you know, get, get the dirty version, you know, the clip shit and listen to that, you know, just, just download or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And fuck with it, you know? Facts, super facts. And it, it gives you like the art, the artist and it's, you know, like me being an artist, I love hearing artists in their purest form, you yeah. know, like, like the, it's like you don't want to see a painter that was edited, you know what I'm saying? So um the artist in his purest form shows you who like it kind of gives you a, a a leeway or opens a door to who they truly are. Yeah. You know, so it, as you can hear it flow, you it, sometimes those cuss words or explicit lyrics, you know, help you understand some of the pain that they're going through or why are they so happy or you know, so yeah. That I think that's why having an explicit version is important. Now, if your mama tell you you can't listen to it, don't listen to it. But <laughs> if you anything, if you anything like me, you probably would still go hide somewhere and listen to you know, yeah. all the gangsta, all the gangster music you want. Hell yeah, my mom used to trip about that shit too. <laughs> <laughs> A lot, you know. But no, no, I like that. You know that I like how you that was like your click moment. You know that really brought yeah. you into music and like okay, I want to do this. So. After that point, what what was your next step? After that, um, man, I I became Mister Freestyle in the lunchroom at the lunch table. Um, freestylist. I literally like my whole like high school, my four high school years. I literally, um, I literally battled damn near every day really that damn near every day or just got into some type of cypher every day just kept on like improving. to the point 
Right, to the point where like, like we had like three lunch periods. Like I don't, and like your fourth, like the fourth period of school in high school was either you would go to fourth and then lunch or go to lunch, then fourth or fourth and split it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, it, uh, I never went to fourth period, bro. I never, <laughs> I never went to fourth period. Like to the point where like, so like they had different teachers that like uh, chaperoned each lunch period. Yeah. Every single one of them. Every single one of them knew. Every like, <laughs> like you should be like, damn, Reese, you going to class today? I mean, you know, it depends on where you go. Yeah. I yeah. felt like a, I felt like a legend, bro. Like you, you get when you get the whole cafeteria and lunch room like lining up to hear you rap. You, it was literally performing before I actually knew I was performing. You know. Yeah. So that was your and, first step. Yeah, and that that shit gave me a rush. And then um, even then, like I only freestyled. I never knew how to write songs or uh write raps or just like put like really like sit down and pin bars together. I was freestyling like and then um um around the time that like the Cassidy's and the murder mooks were coming out. Then I was able to uh, like all like this is when they was going on Funk Flex and DJ Clues Radio and they were freestyling for six seven minutes you know like yeah and and then when I found out a lot of them was writing it before they was going up there you know they were all pretty much memorized verses so like I went from there to learn to try to learn how to write now I'm not gonna lie like it took me it took me a few years to actually kind of get a grasp of writing lyrics and putting stuff together because I used to be like, man, when I say this stuff off the dome, it's fire. Why is it not translating to paper? Yeah. And, you know, and... um, Yeah, because that's that, that's different, you know, because it's sometimes it's harder for people to fucking freestyle versus yeah. writing, you know what I'm saying? That's yeah. easier for them, but that's opposite yeah. for you. Yeah, well, it was, yeah, it was the flip side for me. I couldn't write to, like, save my life. And then at, once I got it, it was more, it sounded like I was writing battle raps. Like yeah. it, it literally, because I mean, when you think about it, that's where I had, that was like where it I was came your main from. Thing, you know? yeah. yeah. So they were all like, it was like punchline, punchline, set up, punchline, punchline. And then um, just keep constantly working. And then I dropped like, I did like, I recorded for the first time, like my first ever mixtape. Mm-hmm. And, um, from that moment on, like the writing bug became more important to me. Yeah. And I just kept writing and kept writing and kept writing. And I, once I started, like I recorded like my first project in like 07. And then, and I was super young still then. How was the recording? Then, what was the, you know, the background of that? First of all, it was one of some when I first got there it was some of the most intimidating shit I'd ever seen. Oh, yeah. Even though it's nothing but you and a microphone, it was some of the most intimidating shit I'd ever seen. Yeah, because now you're like right there front line with it now. Yeah. And then here. you not not only that, like it's different where like when you rapping at a table, you got a bunch of people, you know what I'm saying? So if it gets too weird, it's uh you can like kind of look off to the distance or you know. Yeah. When you in the studio, you have a, a engineer staring dead at you. Yeah. And it's like, man, he watching me make every mistake that I could possibly make. Yeah. And um, so, but the first time I did it, it wasn't like traditional where, you know, you might record your hook or your chorus, then your verse. He was like, man, I just want to see what you got. So go straight through. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I, you know, so I was recording the hook verse hook all together like i was, it wasn't no break in between just doing the whole and song just doing the whole song and i did like nine of them that night jesus really and, and he and yeah and he was like man you got something <laughs> he like this he like it's all it ain't there yet but you got something and you know i, I took it and was appreciative but i, I swear getting there from like do like, you ever see those memes where it say this is how it started versus this is how it ended yeah. and how it's going. Yeah. So how it started was like me being super intimidated 
But I ain't gonna lie, after he told me that, when I walked out that booth, I had my chest was poked out. Like, yeah, like I, I knew I was cold then. You just felt and, it. Yeah, you got that approval. But where it would, and pretty much, and what it did was, and he was like an older guy too, you know, you know, um, for somebody who like who works and crafts lyrics the way I do, getting appreciated by people who who grew up listening to like the the Big Daddy Kings, the Rock Hymns, you know, who was here when like hip hop was like blossoming in the eighties, and then yeah. like the nineties were like. There was the Easies, and then you know the NWAs, and then the Wu Tangs, and then you know the Nas's and stuff like that. When you get love from those guys. It, it it does give you a different feeling. Yeah, it for does. sure. And, and and so my um, from that day on, I was like, yeah, I'm going to work on this, and I'm going to be the best version of me, which is better than them. And I'm going to continue to grow the way I grow, and man, I, I it's gotten pretty good. But like even now, at the point of my life now, with me still doing music, I still feel like I can continue to grow. So yeah, yeah there's always something room for growth. That, yeah, that's something that taught me too. There's no cap on how great you could be. You can continue no. to grow. Yeah, for sure. Like you never stop growing. You always, if if you think that that you stop, then that's where you're gonna tap out, bro. You know, like, yeah. Like you, you have to continue to grow and learn different shit. You know, other people will put you on to different shit. You know, yeah, and it's like, um, like, um, like rich people, like, or or not, not even rich people or smart people. If you're the richest or the smartest in the room, then you're in the wrong room. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I, I felt like that with like lyricism. If if I'm the best lyricist in the room, then I might be in the wrong room. Or if they're not even comparable. Um, lyricists and songwriters in the room with me, I need to step up and go to a different room where I feel like these guys are, are like we we boxing every time we on a record. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, That's yeah. I need to be in that room and more competition. Learned, you know, hell yeah, competition. It it can definitely yeah. breed success, man. Some yeah. people crumble under it. You know, everybody not meant for the competition, but I, I'm all here for it, man. Yeah, because you've been doing that shit since middle school, doing that battle yeah. rapping. <laughs> oh, man. Listen, listen. Check check out my melody type shit, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I really do like your flow, though. Like, you know, the the one you had, like the Cigar Part 2 one, right? Yeah. Um, Like, I, I really like that. You know, it's like a real, like, New York flow, you know? it's it's It just has that that way you, you say shit and the way it goes on yeah. the beat. You're like, yeah, this shit's East Coast, man. I fuck with it. Man, and what's crazy is that being from the Midwest, I get asked a lot, am I from the East Coast, man? <laughs> like, I, I, cause I don't, cause technically like the Midwest sound is like a mixture of so many different things. Yeah, it is. So, so like uh, a lot of guys be like, man, are you from the East Coast? You from New York? I, I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't from New York. I just, that's just where my love from it came from though. Like the guys from the East Coast, the, the New Yorks, the Phillies, the uh, DC, like, that's where a lot of a lot of the guys I listen to are from, you know, and yeah, you so know, you, would, you, you, you adapt art imitates that. art, yeah, 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 pretty yeah. Much, you know what I'm saying. So I don't know, man. I I, I love having the, the at least the the East Coast like bravado and slang in my music, though, just because it actually makes me feel it, it. It gives me some normalcy when I when I get the when I get to doing what I do, you know. Yeah, for sure. Where where are you actually from? I'm actually from Dayton, Ohio. Really? Damn. Yes, actually from I'm I relocated to Columbus uh maybe like a year and a half ago. Yeah. But I'm from Dayton, Ohio. Uh yeah, man. Like most people don't don't expect like Ohio guys to be able to do that either. Like, yeah. no, no, like you, you know it's funny though. Everybody thinks like Ohio is just like a cornfield. Like Bro, I the same one, thing had, with Nebraska. I'm from Nebraska. That same shit. Word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like every, everybody thinks like there's literally just houses stuck in like the middle of like some farmland or cornfield. But in reality, <laughs> it's man, like Ohio is, is kind of wild, man, because it gives you it literally Ohio is literally the epitome of the Midwest. And what I mean by that is like like remember we were talking about like how the Midwest has so many different styles of music. Yeah. The Ohio has so many different styles of people but it doesn't seem Midwestern. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
Ohio is a Ohio has a lot of little cities that give you big city feels. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. So like you you feel like you're in a place bigger than you are, but you're not really. You know what I'm saying? And that yeah. actually sometimes can work against you because a lot of artists get trapped here, thinking that they're in. You know, like that where they've made it because they've grown such a popular fan base in Ohio that that's it. You know what I'm saying? But but once you start going outside of Ohio, you realize how big the world actually is, though. Yeah. And that's that's when you made the big move or what? When you moved to the uh, where you're at now? Well, and see, um, that and then just like uh, me and my lady, we always talked about like just living in a bigger city. Yeah, you know, I I think I think I'm I've always been one of those people that just loves bigger cities. You know what I'm hey, saying? Like, yeah, it's just uh, if I could have if like the only we stayed in Ohio because family was close. I mean, we moved in yeah. like to one of the biggest cities in Ohio, but we stayed in Ohio because family was close. Yeah, um, but it. if it was up to me, if it was up to me, we probably would have been in like New York or Atlanta or somewhere like that. Yeah, but she, uh, you know, I that's my lady, so I, you know, I try to take you know, her what's names into consideration. Yeah, I feel And I, I got I got a little girl too. And the worst thing I could do with her being so young is snatch her away from all her family. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? At such a young age. So but I, I've always loved the big city feel, man. I yeah. just I always feel like it's something to do. Yeah, like yeah, for sure. Cause when you live in like a smaller town, it's like, dude, fuck, this this town is so small. I've already done everything here, you know, and like what do I do and, now? And, and you know everybody. You visited everything that there possibly could be do. Uh, yeah. You tried all the food there. Like you get tired. Like here, man. We've been here for a year, and I find new stuff I've never known about. <laughs> and and it's crazy because my like a lot of my family is from here, and so like um, I used to come visit here in the summers, and like bro, I still find out shit that I never knew. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like. And I got family that's lived here their whole life, and I'd be like, yo, let's try this. I looked it up, and they'd be like, man, we didn't even know that was here. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, these people that lived here for 30, 40, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, and... They still learn. They still learning, so I'm <laughs> with that, man. Yeah, no shit, because I always like learning new shit, you know, like, doing different yeah. shit, you know, new scenery, same, you know, the same shit, you know, being in the same fucking room all the time going to the same school like it drive me fucking crazy you know what i'm saying and, you know it, yeah and then as a creative it, it, it sometimes it can give you a mental block too yeah, you know what i'm yeah. saying Fuck like man. when you want to yeah when you want to expand what you know and what you write about or paint about or even if you shoot videos like man being stuck in one place forever and not visiting places or like trying out different places yeah. Man, you'll uh you'll find yourself like uh have, like running into a block where you can't you can't really express your creativeness. Yeah, see, and that's what I kind of you know ran into, but now you know I started you know kind of expanding out of different you know different towns, you know, like you know, nearby yeah. towns are like fuck it, let me go check out this town, let me go take some new pictures for my clothing brand, you know, because that's where right, I got right. you know the invest in yourself clothing, you know. So I was yeah trying to find you know different places to take pictures and shit. So I started going outside of town, you know, and but that's what this podcast is, though. You know, like I was saying, like it gets you, I get your definition on how you invest in yourself. You know, how yeah. you like with your rapping, you know what I'm saying? Like how you stayed so at it for so long, you know, and how far you want to take it, you know, and everything that comes along with it, you know. And, and man, like to me, like, don't don't get me wrong. Even with even with rap and music, period, you're going to invest financially. Yeah. But um, the, to me, the mental hours are the most important. Yeah, they are. You know, because if you're not there mentally, then all that money in the world, all the money in the world ain't going to help you, like, want to continue to do this. Yeah. Like, that's why so many people, like, have one hit record or one hit album and then disappear because they weren't, like, mentally they're somewhere else. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, just think of the great Lauren Hill, for example, man. She probably loves music, but her her mind mentally is not in music. That's why we never got another Lauryn Hill album. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or um, it's just so many like so many people that like certain things happen and it throws them off mentally, and we never get more music, or we never get, uh, or even painters, painters that that paint things and um 
have like this beautiful painting and then we never get another painting or yeah because they never can they never can recreate it because mentally they're sometimes mentally they're not there you know yeah and just like where the fuck what happened to them you know what the fuck they were so cool they were so great they could have done so much good shit you know and that that's what i'm trying not to be you know what i'm saying because that that gives me motivation because i I don't want to do this shit you know what i'm saying because shit does get rough you know but you got to stay at it and stay consistent and keep expanding and trying to try different avenues if something ain't working you know what i'm saying you got to find different ways to come up right 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 that's what i'll go ahead you know my my biggest fear is being a used to be yeah. Like, I don't want to be that guy that, that they'd be like, oh, yeah, he used to be good or he used to be dope. Yeah. So, like, like I, I don't I don't ever want to be that guy. So, like, I want to at least try my damnedest to to make whatever whatever my, you know, my my future holds for me. I want to be the, my guy, that, that guy to be like, man, I tried to take control of it and drive it to wherever destination I'm supposed to go. Yeah, you know, like so people don't be like, man, Reese never gave it his all. They can't never say that. No, you know? and so like I, I um, just the the fear of not wanting to be a used to be, and just for like my love for this shit, man. It, man, it's so hard to to just walk away or not give my hundred percent. You know. Yeah, because it's your passion. I mean, this is what you want to fucking do. You know. So I mean. Yeah. I can like definitely tell in your songs, like you put in work, you know, with the videos you put in work, you know, with the settings and the stories and shit you tell and how, how your lyrics go in with it, you know, like uh, the one you did with the the best, the, you know, the, the cigar part two, right? Yeah. That one you had the WWE shit at the beginning and, and basically yeah. you echoed the part where he said, you know, I'm the best, right? Yeah. 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 So, so like, I like that because you incor- uh, incorporated that with, you know your lyrics and shit you know so yeah, yeah yeah could you could you explain that song you know how it came about i'd love to learn that so um a couple years ago i did a record called um cigar smoke one yeah and um you know like i always knew i wanted to do a part two i kind of was in with the cigar smoke i was kind of inspired by like um like like how rick ross has the maybach music one maybach music two maybach music three and um I always knew I kind of wanted to do a part two. So when I came around, when I got around to doing that project, the excellence execution, mm-hmm. I thought about, you know, wrestlers. Cause I figured like music is supposed to take us on a journey, right? You know, yeah. like at least a lot of music takes us on a journey. Well, no matter how much of a hood kid or a good kid, depending on like what part of town you were from, most of the kids I knew loved wrestling. You know, like, most of the kids I knew loved wrestling. I did. And, like, <laughs> so, so exactly. So, like, you know, when you – hell, I'm still a fan now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, when you uh, – what I wanted to do was kind of remind them or give them that feeling they felt the first time they heard a wrestling promo, the first time they heard their favorite wrestler being a champion. And I championed that same wrestler's um, bravado and I added it to my music. So even with like like the best there is cigar smoke, a wrestler by the name of Brett the Hitman Hart yeah. used to call himself the, the excellence of execution. That's where the name was. And then I thought, you know, with music, if I execute perfect and make sure everything I do is excellent and within it, then, you know, I'm, that's what I'm embodying. So boom, there, there goes the title, the excellence of execution. Uh, Bret Hart also used to say he was the best there is, the best there was, the best there ever will be. Yeah. And anybody that tells you that they do music and don't want to be the best, they're lying. Yeah, no shit. Unless they're, I mean, now they don't get me wrong. There are maybe there may be a few people here just for a check, but yeah. everybody wants to be the best. So if I'm gonna, you know tell you I'm the excellence execution. There's no way I can't tell you that I'm the best at doing what I do. So that's where we got the best there is, but I felt like the lyrics, even though it it explained it, they explained how, how great I were. They kind of still gave you like a mob vibe to it just by the way I talk, you know, Mm -hmm. like the way I talk, the way I carry myself. And uh, so the, like talking about that cigar smoke, the first one, when I heard it, I instantly thought like it made me feel like the first one did. Yeah. 
Yeah. And so, like, uh, I was able to recall from a lot of that, and that's how I got cigar smoke too. So just a mixture of the both, man, and, and and we came in. That's actually like my favorite song off that project too. I'd say that was just mine too. I, I, I fucked with all of them, but that was my favorite one. Yeah, I feel like that one right there was uh it was like me and damn near my purest form. You know, like far as just like like if you're going to go see a basketball player and you just see him shooting jumpers and he don't miss, and like he hit the form of the shot is so perfect. That's how I felt like uh best there is. I felt like that was what was on display. Yeah. And like, so like just from a lyrical standpoint, I felt like not only did I get my shit off, it was me being the best, one of the best versions of me, you know? Yeah, because you had a lot of confidence in that song. And, and that song was about being fucking confident. So it yeah, it, it, it did fucking much. go with that. You know, like you, you said shit about, you know, being confident, you know, you know, just doing like you can do shit better. You know what I'm saying? Like that's you yeah. know, the kind of shit I got out of it, you know? Yeah. And that, 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 that literally was what I was trying to embody, man. Mm -hmm. I, you know, don't get me wrong, everybody's great, but uh, I'm here to be the best. Yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm, I'm here to be the best. Yeah, and the way that song fucking came out, man, hell yeah, you're on the right track with that <laughs> shit for sure. <laughs> I got the message. <laughs> you know? But that, dude, that, that's the song that I that I heard. That was the first song I heard by you because, you know, the Instagram ad had popped up and I was like, damn, this, this guy's pretty fucking good. Let me check him out. And, you know, I checked yeah. it out and I was like, damn, this is guy's pretty cool. Let me hit him up, see if he'll be down to do a podcast. And he's, you're like, fuck yeah. <laughs> you know, man, I, listen, I love to talk about music. I, hell, we could talk, we could have talked about just about anything, man. Yeah. Hell yeah. If, if, if you would have hit me up and said, man, you want to speak about whether or not aliens are real, I'd have been like, yeah, man, fuck it, why not? Like, <laughs> Bro, let's I do it. You know? <laughs> I've had podcasts like that before with like some space people and shit, you know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, them dudes is wild, man. Them dudes is wild. Yeah. But yeah. they, man, they will argue their points and it'll make you walk away like, man, maybe he ain't as crazy as I thought he was. Yeah. Man. Man. Like, yeah, it's starting to yeah, make sense so, now that I hear that sign, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, hey, more power to him, man. <laughs> no shit. I, I also like the other song you did called uh, Psycho uh, Sid. Uh, Psycho Sid Vicious? Yeah, 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 yeah. That one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that one. Could you explain how that one, you know, the, the, the meaning behind it? Uh, So, another wrestler, a favorite of mine, uh, a guy yeah. by the name of Psycho Sid. He was Psycho Sid in WWE, and then when he went to WCW, he was Sid Vicious. So I took his name and just combined it all and made it one. And um, Sid Vicious was a very uh, kind of sadistic but super powerful guy. Mm -hmm. His character was um, was borderline bad guy, but he could make you root for him. Yeah. So, so with writing Psycho Sid Vicious, um, I wanted to, I kind of wanted to take you back to a, um, a street version of me. You know what I'm saying? Like the, the, the kid that was at the lunch tables, like rapping his ass off. And the, it, it wanted, I wanted to give you a cipher feel so you could feel like how strong I actually am. Like, mm -hmm. like to the point where like, man. Like he say some things, and I don't know if I should like if I should like the things he's talking about, but I like it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, kind of, and, and kind of like give you that Sid feel because, like I said, Sid gave you this feeling that he was kind of crazy, but he was it was he was so crazy he was brilliant. Yeah, and and like you either loved him or you hated him, like, and sometimes every once in a while you could love him. And then you'll look up and be like, I can't stand him, man. Like, he's crazy. <laughs> and, and, and like, I felt like with the Psycho Set, lyrically, I wanted to, you know, punch. You know what I'm saying? Just keep throwing punches until you be like, well, he's hitting me, but I don't have a problem with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get it, you know? Yeah. And that's pretty much how Psycho Set came together, man. It was... That was another fun record just because I, you know, it was another time I really just got to channel, you know, how great of a lyricist I could try to be. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause it did and come then, out really good. 
Because you yeah, had the man. intro and the outro, WWE too, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. And, like, just in that promo itself, it was, like, Sid, like, and it also made me, like, it, and that was one of the reasons why it was the first record, too. Because even with the intro, Sid was, like, like, he comes in the ring and these guys are arguing about a championship that they don't even have. Sid is the champion. Yeah. So he's, like, pretty much, like, like, don't forget about me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm the champ. And that's that's also, like, so the intro was, like, yo, I'm back. And make sure you remember me. Yeah. You know, like, I, you know, I'm here. I'm still the champ. You know, like, that's, and it just kind of, after that, it snowballed, man. And, and once I started and got the first two lines, it, it snowballed. I probably wrote that record in maybe 10 minutes, man. Damn, that quick. Yeah, just just yeah, just cause I like once I caught it, I caught it. And when I caught it, I felt it was damn near like going Super Saiyan, bro. Like that was one of the records I could say it literally took me no time to write. Yeah, because I mean, like you 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 can do the the freestyle. You you, you like you could say, Oh, here's here's a verse, and then you could think back, let me write all this shit. You know, is that what you yeah. do? Like you as as you're well, rapping it, you you write shit down, right? Yeah, a, a lot of it, a lot of it, yeah. I like, I man, I don't feel right not writing, like, I, so I have to write it down. But I've also forgot so much dope shit, and I hate it, bro. Like, yeah. hate it, hate okay. it. Like, like the phone is probably like the greatest thing they ever created, at least for me, with a notepad. Because yeah. <laughs> no, one, I'm not carrying a notebook around, man. So now I can jot stuff down, but most I'm of the time. Like you said, I'm literally sitting here with my phone going over lines and I'm like, eh, nah, that don't work. You know, then, yeah. okay, yeah, I like this and add it on. And with Sid, I got the first one and I don't think I ever said, a, nah, that don't work with Sid, with Psycho Sid. So it I, I think that it, it was, it came quick and it flowed through. Like I said, it was maybe 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah. Like, and I had, and I had a first verse, a hook, and a second verse. Damn. You and, know, you you know what would help you, I think, too? Like, if you use, like, they have that voice recording on, on the iPhone or whatever yeah, you fuck, and yeah, you can just yeah, yeah. record it, and if you fuck yeah, with it, yeah. you just write down when you fuck with it. Ah, oh, that don't work. Or, you know what what does yeah, work, yeah. you know? Man, you know, it's crazy. I've had this phone for all this time, and I never even thought about that, man. I, I just honest. thought about it. I never thought about that shit either. But when you said <laughs> that, I was like, dude, this will help you. <laughs> Listen, team, teamwork makes the dream work, man. You know? Hell yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, man. But, man, I'll tell you, man, like, of course, I wish I could remember the, the shit, but man, shit, I, I, I forget can. so. <laughs> man, yeah, I forget so much dope, especially like if I'm just like if I'm out at a mall or something. Yeah, man, like it. But it's funny though because I didn't used to do it, but now, man, I'll pull my phone out and start writing anywhere. Yeah, like, mine I well. went to Port, I went I went to Puerto Rico like a month or two ago, and mm-hmm. everybody's like, we at this we're at this like little like cabana where they're like making like smoothies you know what i'm saying they're putting the smoothies inside the pineapple oh shit and, damn some authentic shit <laughs> um, yeah man that shit was fire too by the way damn I'll and bet. um everybody else is like enjoying herself at the cabana i sneak off <laughs> to the side because i caught a i caught a rhyme and i was like yo i'm rhyming in puerto rico <laughs> i gotta write this shit down you know what i'm saying yeah, like yeah. Bro. And they were like, man, where, where were you, bro? Like, shit, man, I had like eight bars that I needed to jot, <laughs> right? Because I felt it was fire and I didn't want to forget it. And we're in Puerto Rico and I came up with eight bars. So, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, bro. Because I'll be doing the same shit, but with my podcast ideas, my clothing brand ideas, I'll carry a notebook around. I'll put that yeah. in my pocket and I just, you know, because I like the physical form of it, you know, I don't know, but, you know, but I'll carry it around with me and, you know, I'll be, you know, I went to like Guatemala. Georgia, yeah. fucking California, man. Everywhere I go, I take that bitch, you know. But I'll, I'll write down, you know, a little little something that comes in my head because if I don't, I'll forget it, like you said. And you know, it, like right. when you're around that shit outside of your norm, you know, like where I'm from, Nebraska, you you get these great ideas because you have more uh, inspiration. So you because yeah, you're in a yeah. different place. So I was like, fuck, I can't forget this. But I carry that bitch everywhere. I got it right here, right now. <laughs> Look, see, hey, that's what I'm saying. I'm on the phone right now. So yeah, man, like. <laughs> I, de- I definitely dig it, man. I, I get it. Like, uh, man, because you know when inspiration strikes, if you don't 
if you don't take advantage of it, bro, it's going. They say if you don't use what they say, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. Yeah, that's that. That's a true fact, bro. That's Fuck a true yeah. fact. I think Kanye said, "Uh, I forgot better shit than you ever thought of." <laughs> and, and I honestly think like some of my best shit that I could have wrote down, or some of the best lines, are lines I forgot. Yeah, dude. That's why it, it don't matter if it's some you think at the time it's some bum ass idea or it'll have its time to shine. And if it don't, who gives a fuck? At least you wrote it down so you right. don't forget, you know? It ain't gonna Listen, hurt. Listen, you ain't you ain't no you ain't no worse off if, if it doesn't work. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like if it if it works, you're a genius. If it doesn't, you're still in the exact same place you were. Exactly. So like why why not, bro? Like why not? Yeah. Hell yeah. I like it though, man. I like it. We we got the same fucking thing we be doing though, the writing down shit, yeah. you know. <laughs> I like that. I, I also like, you I'm, know, on that uh that song that you did, you know, the Psycho Sid one. I, I you said you talk about like, you know, starting businesses and doing shit like that, you know, like what kind of businesses yeah. would you like to start in the future? Um, man, I am a I'm a hat guy. And uh you know, who doesn't love clothes, you know, like, I, yeah. but I love hats and sneakers. I would love to own, like, my own sneaker and hat shop. Yeah, it'd be tough. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, and, like, I'm a, like, I'm trending up towards the comic book nerd. Mm-hmm. So I would like to incorporate all of that together. Because I yeah. feel like everybody I know that reads, like, everybody I know that reads comic books loves shoes. Yeah. So, like, I don't, I, like, I want to incorporate all that together, man, like. But like shoes are done, like gym shoes, sneakers, man. I love shoes, man. I am a sneakerhead to the core. So that'd be your fucking your business you'd be doing yeah. then right so, there. That'd be something, your lane. Something, <laughs> something, something, man. It, it'll be something in that area, something in that I create one big melting pot and be able to watch it, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> Cause once you got once it, it it's easier. Yeah, because once you got it, you yeah. know it's easier for you know to do different shit, you know. It, it's easier to, yeah. oh, I'm going to do my rapid. Well, now I can do this business, you know, because you have more yeah. people to help you out. You know, but at the beginning coming up, it's just you. It's just me, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You right. ain't no fucking help, you know what I'm saying? So it's just. Right. You got to you gotta build that. And I will say this, uh, this year was the first time I did merch. For real? And, uh, yeah, I did merch this year and. I did like a limited edition, like the project before that one was a project called Clips. And I did a limited edition like clip shirt. And I did like I only did like 50 or something like that. Damn. And, still, um, that's good. Yeah. And yeah, and I was able to get like like do them all, you know what I'm saying? So like yeah. you did all of them. So that was dope, man. Um that's fucking dope, so I man. Think, I like that. I I think definitely. I definitely will probably do, and I love graphic tee, so I definitely would do something along the t-shirt line too. Yeah. Um, Even if you just do actually, li- limited shit, you know, just here and there, yeah. bro, you you can do yeah. that shit for sure. Right. Yeah, man. So I'm um I'm actually uh it's funny you say that because I'm actually working on a merch thing with my lady, and we're going to try to collaborate oh, yeah. and come up with um with some hats. So, you know, look look for it in the future. There will be some type of some type of hat. I don't know what it's gonna say yet, but you know, we're going through designs. Yeah. I know we, we were thinking about one doing the um, you know, recipes of Kobe Bryant. Yeah. Doing the uh the, the girl dad. We were thinking about doing girl dad hats. Oh yeah. Um yeah. and then just you know, just other little ideas, man. So, you know, just be on the lookout, man. Definitely Hell keep yeah. you informed and updated, bro. Yeah, see, that's what's cool. You know, you ain't got to just put everything. I mean, you can even, I mean, with your clothing and shit, you can do whatever you want, you know, and you can also brand your fucking, your rap, you know, like they go together, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So right, that's, that's, right. that's what's cool about it because you're building your your image even more, you know? Yeah. And people that's will be like, true. Where's, where's that shirt from? Where's that hat from? Oh, this guy raps, he does this shit, you know? Hey, check him yeah. out because it gets your name hey, man, out that's, more. That's, that's kind of how the shirts did, man. Like, I, get, I did a couple and you know, of course, family are gonna buy them, but yeah. I mean, I have friends that I hadn't talked to in 15, 20 years, man. You know, we were just it just was always love with us. And uh they would hit me up like, man, I see you got shirts. Yo, I want one. So next thing I know, I was traveling back and forth, you know, to the city to, you know, hand, like give shirts out, man. You know, yeah. it was man, it was dope, man. It was dope, man. So I enjoyed it. I just um 
don't know, man, just kind of sitting and, and trying to figure out what my next idea or move is going to be with the merch. You know, I know I want to do the hats for sure. And then, I don't know, man. We'll, we'll see. Something will come up, though. Hell yeah, fuck with it, man. I'll, I'll follow you, so I'll be checking it out, too, you know, so I'll see it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Appreciate that, man. Yeah. What uh, Another one that I did like, you know, you know, basically off your uh, execute, as, as the excellence of edu- uh shit you know what i'm talking about uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> excellence of uh execution. execution that's what i'm talking about yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. my bad but yeah that, that one you know that song you know you're talking about like the you know kind of like a new york you know new york flow right and that you yeah. mentioned something about that you know and that's when i was like oh so he is from new york you know that's what i thought i was like <laughs> oh shit it makes <laughs> sense <laughs> you know yeah man i just I, I just inspired by them a lot of those guys man the, the jay-z's the Nas is yeah. Yeah. Even a lot of the newer guys, like uh, the Benny the Butchers and um, Conway. Man, you know, there's so many guys from New York. Man, I I don't want to discredit any of them by not by not remembering all of them. We're not saying all of them, but it's so many of them, man. Yeah, like <laughs> that, uh, you know, like I said, that either helps me, that either helps shape me as an artist back then, or keeps me on my toes as an artist now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So, man, shout out, big up to New York, man, for creating some spitters. That's not, and that's not saying that there isn't spitters anywhere else because they're, they're great rappers everywhere, bro. Like, sure. you know, like, like for instance, like one of my favorite rappers is Freddie Gibbs, and he's from like Indiana, I believe, or something like that. Yeah, he's dope as fuck. So yeah, so like, there are great rappers everywhere, but you know they say New York is the mecca, man, and. Whether it's basketball or music, but that's where I find that's where I, I grab a lot of my inspiration from, man. Yeah, so big up to him. Oh yeah, I feel it. And that song though, you talk about, you know, people start shit with because they have no purpose. You know, you, you and that's like one of the lines you had, right? Like they have like yeah. not, no shit going on, so like they're gonna start shit or they ain't really got nothing yeah. going on, right? You know, yeah, and then, yeah. But like now you're saying like. Now you have something to focus on, you know, because you that that I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but you said you used to be like that or some shit in the song, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then now you found Maybe. your purpose. Yeah. Um, you know, when you're young and you just out here doing whatever, you yeah. know, you you know, you looking, you worry about the next dollar, you worried about you don't care about nobody's feelings. Yeah, you made a lot of money, but what's your purpose? What you here for? Yeah. And, um, man, I just, like, so I try to touch on a lot of those records, 99 to 98, 99 to 99.5% of my records are me recalling a lot of stuff I've been through and done. Um, So um, I can recall being a, a foolish kid, you know, Um. It's okay, it's okay to be a foolish kid, but, like, just don't be a foolish adult. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got to come so, up out that shit, you know? Yeah, so so when, you know, like, I just pretty much just wanted to talk about, like, yeah, like, there was no purpose in what I was doing at first. But, like, now I feel like, like, I have so many people depending on me, I can't move without a purpose. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like I had, I had to, you know, my end game can't be my end game. So I always tell people like, even with me, like, you know, plan A, you know, it's always cool to be, have a plan A. If plan A is what you want to do, have a plan A. My plan B is to find, if plan A doesn't work, my plan B is to still find a way for plan A to work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and my, my plan C is repeat plan B. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Like I, you know, I, I I feel like I know what I was put on earth to do, you know, and I just wanted to continue to grow, and you know, like sometimes you grow away from people or grow over them, mm-hmm. and like I've I've had that, and just because I figured out what I wanted to do in my life, and they didn't, and you try to stick around and be a good friend, and yeah, but. You know, you you as weak as the company you keep, man. So, yeah, for I, real. you know, like, so I can't be around guys who have nothing to lose mm-hmm. or living with no purpose. Yeah, I, f- I know. So I, I have, you know, no, I feel it. Like, you know, I know because I mean, like, here you are, you know, 
in the beginning, you know, just you guys just chicken. Ain't, ain't nobody got shit to do. And nobody's everybody's just fucking around, just doing the same shit, you know. But now you yeah. a few years go by, you're older, you got a purpose, you had some shit happen, you go went through, they're still yeah. doing the same shit, but you're trying to do something and they don't fucking understand, you know. So like why are you acting weird? Why are you acting so you know, why are you doing this shit? Why you ain't fucking me, you know? Yeah. So then now you're like, fuck, I don't want to deal with this shit. It's too much distraction, it's fucking with me, and it's just gonna bring me down. So now you're like, all right, now I'm going to give up. I'm just going to, you know, ease off. I'm not going to say fuck you, but I'm going to, you know, I'm going to still, you know, you know, be your friend. But like, I, I can't kick it with you, you know, because yeah. now you're bringing me down, you know, but it ain't nothing like that. Right. But I just found what I wanted to do. And in order for me to do this, this is what I got to do to come up. And, and like, like relationships are, are weird because of that, too, because like I say, like the relate, like the relationships in your life, whether they're friendships intimate business there's a certain way you carry them mm -hmm. so like so i call it the handshake effect mm -hmm. there are certain people when you hand when you when you dap them up and you give them a handshake you embrace them yeah you keep them close you hold them close there are some people when you dap them up and you give them a handshake you put your arm out mm -hmm. they don't go they don't they don't come no for they don't come in your personal space you handshake how's it going and you go about your business mm -hmm. That's what like like that's how your relationships in life are. There are some people you you continue to be around and you embrace, and there are some people you love from a distance. Yeah, that's you know what, what I'm saying? saying. Yeah, that makes so, sense. So you you know like uh, you just got to figure out who you when you dap them, whether or not you bring them close to you, or whether or not you can keep them away from you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you can love them from a distance. But they can still be detrimental to your life if they still get too close. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so you those are the people you you do want to put that arm up and that that and you know you want to keep the keep your distance from. Yeah, I like how you put that. You know that 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 absolutely makes sense to me. You know because you know who you want close and who you don't. You know who's gonna bring you up and who's gonna bring you down. You know it don't mean that you. Yeah because you keep them distant don't mean you don't fuck with them but it just means that exactly you, you can't you can't be around them you know in order to do what you're doing and, and what's crazy is when life because life does change yes it so does. people in those in those two categories will change there will be people that you embraced at one point in your life mm -hmm. that now you have to push that you have to keep that guard up and push away yeah and vice versa there were people that you put your guard up and they grew and continued to grow and now you can embrace them. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, I feel that. So like, like just like life is ever changing, your relationships will be too. Yeah, because shit changes all the time, you know, because everybody goes through some kind of bullshit, you know, but you can't, like you said, can't say fuck them because they're, they were always like that, you know, but you know, you can think back, yeah. I, you, I was like, that. you was like that, you know, you, everybody was doing their shit, you know, so, but you come out of it, you know, you other people eventually come out of it, you know, the people you, you had fuck with you, they go back to it, you know, so it's just all the time, you know, you just got to kind of pay attention and watch what you do, you know? Right, right, right. But yeah, I mean, I, I really like that, man. That that song, I really like that one, you know, because it has another story. It has another meaning behind it, you know? Yeah, no doubt. I like, uh, what was another one? Uh, Making a Million, that one. I, I fuck with that one, yeah. too. You had a yeah. video for that one, too, right? Yeah, man, I took, I took all my... Uh all my little clips from my travels with and the, the Puerto Rico trip I was telling you about. And, uh, cause make, make a million is a record about the title. The title pretty much is self-explanatory, you know, yeah. you know, you, um, you know, you want to make a million, but you don't stop because you want to keep hustling, you know, like, you know, what's don't better stop. than a million, what's better than one million there too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, um, you know, but make a million also is uh, not only hustling and what you go through during the hustle, but enjoying those fruits of your labor. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like it's okay to take, it's okay to enjoy those small victories. And so, like my trip to Puerto Rico kind of embodied me finally letting my hair down and going to enjoy life. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And so, what I did was I took just the scenery and just think certain things I enjoyed about Puerto Rico and we chopped them up and we made it into a little, just a little minute and a half video. Yeah. And, um, 
And like I said, it just it just embodies what the record was about. You know, and it's a it, I pay I pay homage to to juvenile from Cash Money Records. Mm -hmm. You know, like the the hook is is um a close copy of he has a, a song called Ghetto Children. Mm -hmm. And uh it pretty much is similar, you know, like yeah. some of the verbiage, the cadence. Um and like I was a real big cash money fan, so I, I wanted to, you know, like give your artists, give artists their roses before they um, you know, we always wait to love everybody when they die. Yeah, you know, yeah. So I, I wanted to make sure I gave them, um, gave them my roses before. My bad. Too late. Yeah. Gave, uh, gave them my roses before it was too late. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So. Um, yeah. And that's what that's what make a million was, man. Just just the natural hustle, but also showing love to the hustlers that came before you too. Hell yeah, I like that one. Another one I like too was the you know the sins of a father. I watched that on oh, YouTube. Yeah. I like that one. You know, uh, the video was pretty cool too. You know, because you're like you're sitting there, you know, kind of talking, you know, to, you know, the, what was the two kids in the video, right? Yeah, I was actually just my daughter. Just my <laughs> who was the one with the mask? That was your daughter. Too? That was uh, nah, that was uh, I had a buddy of mine come play. Um, see, I don't know if you got a chance to watch Street Dreaming. Yeah, yeah. Um, so like in the Street Dreaming video, you know. The guy that the character I'm playing is a guy that doesn't want to. Um, he doesn't want to be a part of street life, but he really needs the money. Yeah. But the problem is, he brings his daughter along with him. Yeah, he's like, "What the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, like, why is she here? So just like in Street Dreaming, the bullshit that he ends up leading himself into and getting into, his daughter sees it. Okay. And, uh, and the beginning of that project, Street Dreaming, is the first, uh, the first, uh, the first record. Since of a father is the last one, because now what has happened is over all this time, your children have been seeing you create a path of destruction, and yeah. so you cannot expect them to, you know, to not want to be what daddy is. Mm -hmm. You know, like yeah, uh, you know, and I even talk about that on the song, just like. Like you don't think it, you don't think it hurt to hear their daddy killed the man, teach them right from wrong, but left blood all on your hands. Like they, you know, they, 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 kids are intelligent. They see what's going on. Yeah. You know, and and pretty much, like you're killing your kids, man. And like, what if the role was reversed? Everything you you want, you didn't want your kids to do, they end up doing it. But not only doing that, they do it to you. Yeah, you know, because like it's, at the end of Street Dreaming, he hits the guy with the bat, and then at the end of Sins of a Father, he gets hit by the bat by the same child that he brought to go do um, some dirty, faulty shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it was, it was, man. I've seen so many guys who were hustlers or just street guys, and their kids are around for everything, mm -hmm. and then they get older, and now their kids are recreating the same mayhem that they did and they're like man i don't know why they act like this yeah it makes, know, like, yeah because they seen it they were around they yeah, were all that yeah. shit yeah it makes don't sense get me wrong, there, there, there are going to be some kids that you know aren't going to follow that path but you know your, your kids love you so a lot of times they want to follow in your footsteps man yeah for most of the time that's what happens you know but some will realize like man fuck that i don't want to go through the same shit but yeah. you know if that's all they know then they ain't gonna know there's nothing else out there you know that yeah. like there's another way to come up you know or some some shit like that you know you're right, like, right right yeah but i like that i like how you put that together you know the straight dreaming up up on top and then the uh shit the sins of a father on the bottom you know because yeah. it all come together you know so i like that you have the storytelling you have the fucking it's like a whole it's like a whole little movie a whole little movie clip you know and everything it's like a whole yeah. story that you listen to and this is what happens in the end you know so like it's cool you know i like that you know you you, you you're definitely unique and you're creative and shit with that i like that and, and that's what and that's what i want to do man like when i create these records i want it's like binge watching man mm -hmm. i want each, each record to be an episode in a series that you that you love yeah. And each record is, and each album is a different season. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. One season is not going to be the same as the others. 
but you're going to get the same thrilling ride from episode one all so all the way to whatever the last song is. Yeah. And that that's man, that's that's so that's what I try to create. So even everything is everything that comes from me is just like is not only a form of inspiration and a form of my creative like uh just output, but it, it also is for the listeners to actually take a walk with me through every record. And um that's why like um I try to create music to where what I you can hear, you can see what I'm saying. Yeah, you know, like like you can visualize the lyrics. Yeah, and you do, and then you put the vid- visual, and then you definitely fucking can see. You know, what I'm yeah, saying? yeah, 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 the story yeah. and everything. I like that, right, man. Right, right, yeah, and I appreciate that, man. Yeah, what does "know your worth" mean to you? Um, exactly what it what it what it uh what the phrase says, like you matter and what you want matters so much understand that um and not only know your worth know your worth be charged double yeah you know because your potential is a lot greater no you know like whether it's just in real whether it's just in the business world if it's in the real world let don't never let nobody play play you like you're below what a certain standard is yeah you know your standard. You know your worth. Not only know it, charge double and tax. Fuck that. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. Like, yeah. So it, it that that statement is one of the most self-explanatory statements. It should be. The problem is a lot of us don't know that. But man, know how important you are to the people you're around, the people that watch you, and uh, just how important you are to yourself. Yeah. And once you learn that. Shit, the, end, the possibilities are endless. Hell yeah. I like that. And that's a good answer right there. <laughs> Do you, uh, have you ever went through like any kind of business, you know, agreement or anything that, you know, you were promised something or you, you may have been fucked over or just any, anything with business you got kind of screwed out of, you know, and that you could give advice, you know, to someone not to go through that like you did? Um, yeah, I'm not going to say who it was. Yeah, that's cool. But, uh, I had um, an agreement on the table mm-hmm. with a uh, with with a certain artists, and it didn't work out. You know, they kind of disappeared on me. You know, I didn't do anything. I did everything I was supposed to to do on my part. But um, we went the old school way. You know, the the handshake method. Yeah. Uh, you know, promises, and um, I was told. You know, just. Just some of the things that they tell you, like, man, you're going to be able to get your daughter this. You're going to be able to do this. You know, like, man, get everything in writing. Get everything in writing. And make sure you know what they're writing. Yeah. Don't just sign something. Don't just sign something because you're happy to be there. You know, like, we know by these guinea pigs. Um, um, and, and, and make sure, you know, work with people that actually want to work with you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, Work with people that want to work with you, that love what you do, no matter what it is. And like I said, get it in writing or get it in blood, however you're going to do it. Yeah, and that makes sense for sure because, you know, a lot of people get fucked over because it's, you know, based on, you know, yeah. word, you handshake decisions, you know. So, like, yeah. don't get your hopes up until that bitch is in writing and you understand what the fuck right. it says, you know. Don't yeah, don't get man, all hyped yeah. up and blow money or, you know, some bullshit, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Man, don't, don't, let, somebody's t- don't let someone's title – uh, make you feel like just because they have this title, they're going to give you everything. And not only that, like don't create bad business deals for yourself. Don't yeah. tell, don't promise a bunch of things that you can't, you can't uh, deliver on. Mm-hmm. Um, it's so many guys that I've met that are artists that get get chances and have don't have the equipment or or can't deliver on whatever promise they gave. And it's like you hand them the ball and they fumble on the one yard line. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So not only you, you want to get everything in writing and make sure they're not trying to uh, mislead you with some of the legal terms and jargon, but make sure you can give these people what you promise them. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, 
Because then you're and, the one fucking uh, them over, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, sometimes the first chance is the only chance you get. So yeah. a lot of people don't believe in second chances. Yeah, for real. Well, uh, that's all I have for you, man. Did you have anything you wanted to add or leave the people with? Uh, Man, uh, go stream Excellence Execution. It is out everywhere on all streaming platforms. Uh, follow me on all social medias at 937 Reese Dude. That's 937-R-E-E-S-E-D-U-D-E. Cloth Talk is on the way, um, followed by the salt of the earth. So I'm going to be trying to go back to back like uh, like Jordan and Mike. So, I'm oh, did I say Jordan and Mike? I meant like uh, Scotty and Mike. My bad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nice. um, and, yeah, man, just, you know, be the greatest you you can be. Like my uh, – like my brother from Art Has No Rules says, uh, you know, be creative and be monumental. You know, no matter if you can be monumental, even in small places. So that's, that's about it, man. Hell yeah. Well, thank you for taking, you know, an hour out and coming on today. You got 23 hours or 24 hours on this day you spent one with me. And I appreciate man, you coming I, on, man. I mean, Man, I appreciate you having me, man. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you had me, man. So yeah, I'm with hell, yeah. hell yeah, man. I, I, it was great. You know, I had fun, you know, with the shit. You know, I mean, if yeah. you're down, you know, say a year from now, we could do another one. I'm cool with that, man. Most, def- sh- most see definitely. Where we be at. Most definitely. <laughs> you got, man, listen, I, I, I see big things for us, man. Hell yeah, for sure, man. We just got to stay at it, stay consistent, and keep fucking with it, man. Thanks. But yeah, thank you again for coming on, man. I'll, uh, I'll let you know when it comes out, you know, uh, I'll send you my other account, you know, my clothing brand account, you know, after this yeah. and shit. Bro. Oh, yeah, most, de- most definitely. I definitely want to support, too, bro. Okay, for sure, you know. I'll, I'll follow you on everything, man. I, I appreciate that. No problem, man. All right, well, thank you, man. You have a good one, guy. Yeah, you too, man. Yeah.